this might be the nicest snake in my entire collection, believe it or not. If I had to start really splitting hairs. I guess it's maybe the nicest ball python or one of them. Orange Dream Ultra Glow Pied. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. It's the end of the week, and we're going to be going into that snake room and taking a look at some stuff. I'll be cleaning with Cliff. I have a lot of labeling to do, too. I have boa, three boa litters that I have not sexed nor labeled. I'm going to be in there myself, probably. That's something I can do without overly straining myself, but I'm going to be in there probably for two, three hours because it takes a long time to write those tags out. I have about 60 boas. Eh, maybe not that many. Maybe about 50 boas to sex and label. So I want to make sure all that gets done right. I'll probably take some pictures and who knows, maybe some... Some videos will come out of that in the uh, future for sure. And, uh, you know, I was at, I had to go pick up some crickets from my good friend Shane at Patriot Pets for the Bearded Dragons. We'll take a look at that as well. And, you know, who knows what else pops up on this beautiful Friday afternoon. Let's go into that snake room and take a look. Oh All right, I'm at Shane's store here. I'm looking at an animal I've never seen before. This is not a gerbil. It is a daegu. They're like in the chinchilla family. And they uh, they get as big as chinchillas, right? Not quite as no? big. They're about three to four times the size of a gerbil. Look at that little cutie guy. They're actually cute. I like the hair, you know, and they, I like their ears. They're very silky. They kind of have like a hamster ear, but they have a... Uh, gerbil tail. Gerbil tail, <laughs> yeah. So how, how do you cross one of those? Pretty cool. These are babies. They, they, they do get pretty big though, you know, which is kind of cool. Now the question is, why are these cold prairie dogs? Because they bark. They, oh, they do bark? Oh yeah, it's I hilarious. <laughs> I gotta get up on my mammals. I'm not, look, look. Oh, she's curious. Yeah, she wants to see the phone. Usually my snakes just attack the phone. She wants to actually play she, with the phone. She normally likes to bat at me. She gives me a piece of her mind. They're actually pretty cute. How, <laughs> how big do the prairie dogs get? So full grown, these guys are about five to seven pounds usually. Yeah, so they're like bigger than ferrets. The interesting thing about prairie dogs is they don't uh, use their nose to smell you. So if they're curious about you, they'll, they'll come up to you and actually put your, their teeth on your fingers to smell you. They use their tongue. That's pretty interesting. Huh? Very interesting. They're kind of cute though, I gotta say. They are cute. Now, do these things uh, run around the house or do you have to keep them in a cage? Uh, you can let them run around supervised. Um, right. Unfortunately, they are a rodent and uh, they'll, they'll chew, chew everything. stuff. <laughs> yeah, they'll chew their all the wires. You don't want to do that. Definitely not. Yeah, if you're not around, they need to have their own cage to hang yeah. out in. Pretty cool. Guys, maybe you want to get a prairie dog. <laughs> it's cricket time for the bearded dragons. Put some fresh crickets in there. They're going to town. They're like, it is munch down time. They love the crickets way more than they like the um, the worms, the super worms. <laughs> they don't even see them. They're right, they're right underneath them. They like to they like to catch the crickets. They don't they don't want to like just snag them right off of that little piece of cardboard that's right there. They want to actually hunt them. <laughs> I wish we could eat crickets. What a, it would be a lot cheaper to feed yourself. Oop, there he goes. Oop. You got him. <laughs> They're like, yummy. We're going to be hunting all day. All right, blue tongue skink update. At least my baby, my baby girl here, or my boy, whatever it is. We're not sure what sex it is, but this is my northern ivory. You know, I love this this little guy, and we become best friends. This is like I think this this is like the mascot lizard for Palumbo's pythons and boas now. <laughs> it's just so cool looking. If he had long legs, he'd be, they'd be the perfect lizard. Uh, great pets these blue tongue snake you know because they're they're, they're pretty mild mannered they're really easy they don't really need much you know you can feed them cat food 
twice a week when they get to be adults. They don't really even need. They don't even eat that much. You don't have to give them anything special, and they do really well. Look at that. This is the. You know, I've seen a bunch of the northern ivories, and this is probably the whitest one I've seen. I've seen a few people selling them online, probably from all from the same batch. Um, this one really stayed very white. A lot of them get, like, more yellow in, in through here. This one stayed real. This one was, like, snow white when I got them, and stayed really, really white, so pretty happy. All right, a little update on my Pataeus mucosus. Just uh, shed out. Just gonna get a nice little clean skin there. That's actually my albino, Patias. And my little size, little by little. She's getting a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. Beautiful little rat snake. Captive bred. Born. <laughs> well, we're gonna be setting you up pretty soon in a bigger enclosure as soon as you grow a little bit more. There, a little. Albino Halo Red Factor Corn Snake. Sounds very sophisticated. Sounds very high tech. Pablo produced this. We haven't even sexed these yet. Look at it. Look at it shaking its tail like a little rattlesnake. I love that the corn snakes do that. I think it's the coolest thing. They, they mimic rattlesnakes so that the other predators will be scared and think that they're venomous. Really nice coloration of these. I'm, I'm glad I got a couple of them from him. I think I just stole them from him, really. I don't think I even, I don't think there was any exchange. <laughs> he just brought them over and just put them in the, uh, put them in the tub. Let's see, let's see what we got here. Oh, there we go. Let's, let's put this guy right there. They're fast. And they, we gotta be very mindful of these guys. They'll take off. Really nice. Right. I get, look, I got bit, not by this one. I got bit by a different snake, a boa, earlier. Just feeding. When you're feeding, don't use your hands because you will get bit. I promise you, it'll happen. Even though you can, you can feed 100 snakes on that 101 snake, you will get bit. Boas don't really bite, but they're definitely food responsive. There's a little Nelson's milk snake. It looks like a T negative. Aberrant, striped, whole bunch of craziness going on with the snake. Picked them up in a trade. And I thought I got a bunch of uh, two females and a male, and two males, but I wound up getting four of males. This is the only really cool one in the mix. So, can't wait till it gets a little bigger. They're kind of like wormy when they're small. But they put size on, they look really cool, these Nelson's milk snakes. Here's a little update on our Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Bows. There's our Juvenile. They're both pretty small, but this one got its green colors. Everyone's looking good. They're kind of acclimating to life in, in the Palumbo's Pythons and Boas facility. We're gonna look at our Patternless. There's our beautiful Patternless Emerald Tree Bow. Look at that, no pattern, really beautiful. I haven't seen too many of these like this. This might be the nicest snake in my entire collection, believe it or not. If I have to start really splitting hairs. I guess maybe the nice ball python or one of them. Orange Dream Ultra Glow Pied. It's a triple recessive, hypo, ultra melon pied, along with one copy of Orange Dream. This snake is just getting better and better and better. So, I mean, Ultra Mel is great. Hypo Ultra Mel's are really good. Those are Ultra Glows. And then you add the Pie Gene, you get the white in there. And then add Orange Dream. Only thing that would probably make this better would be a second copy of Orange Dream and maybe some Enchi. But really, really, this girl is really putting on nice size. She's looking beautiful. She'll probably breed, hopefully, maybe next this uh, coming season. Uh, she's very close to 1,200 grams. She might be 1,200 grams now, but you know, I'd like to get her a little, beef her up a little bit more. And I've been growing her very uh, conscientiously for the last uh, two and a half years, so. Looking great. Like I said, one of my favorites. All right, a little update on my Orange Dream Leopard Dreamsicle, or Orange Dream Leopard Lavender Albino Pied. Looking good, put some size on. 
and I've been doing like updates every week or two on this little girl. She's one of my favorites. Just lavender albinos are just awesome. Look at that lavender head. The lavender's starting to come in. All this white's going to turn lavender too. Or, and um, I think that leopard really adds a lot. Now the leopard takes away some of the patterns. So this is, becomes a much higher white type of situation because of the leopard. The key would be to add Enchi to this. If we can get some Enchi in here, we're gonna get a lot more pattern back in the pie. Instead of having a high white pie, we'll get more of a low white pie, which I kind of like better. But beautiful orange dream. I'd love to get some super orange dream in here. That would be really nice as well. All right, here's my um, albino. That's 66% uh, head snow or 66% head annery. This little boy, believe it or not, is three years old. He is tiny. For the first two and a half years of his life, he wouldn't eat on his own. We had to assist feed him. He just, like I'm talking like, like two months ago, just started eating on his own. Uh, now we'll start seeing this, him put some size back on. You know what the problem is, is he was perfect in every way whatsoever. So. We just didn't want to not feed him. And we, so we were cyst feeding him. Actually in the beginning, force feeding him, just pushing, pushing a pinky down his throat. And he came around and just decided he was going to start eating. And, you know, which is great. You know, males don't have to be that big when they breed. So it's really about age. So yes, he's going to probably need another year now that he's eating on his own because he's still a little on the small side, but he's got the maturity. He'll probably breed next year. And I'm glad I kept them. I might sell them. I might sell them because you know what? Now that he's eating, I feel good. I would never sell a snake that doesn't eat. And uh, if anyone's interested, beautiful little carpet python. Beautiful albino. I don't even think he's gone through his color change completely, to be honest with you, because I think he was so regressed. I think he's going to get even more beautiful looking, to be honest with you, when he gets older. I think his color is going to change over the next six months. He's going to get much lighter and more, uh, more defined uh, coloration. Because when these uh, carpet pythons are born, these albinos, they look really more yellow. And then as they get older, you see the whites come in and all the pattern comes in. As they go through the ontogenetic color change, it usually happens in a year. His, I don't think even happened yet. Now, a little update on our Enchi Clown Pied project. This little, uh, little female is putting on some nice size. We produced her. In 22, she's about a year old now. She's actually exactly a year old. Next week, she'll be a year old in May. And she's put some, I think, really good size on for her, the length of time she's been alive. You know, you can see she's very low white pied because Enchi pieds are low white pied. So this is Enchi clown and pied. So two of the most popular genes, pied and clown are together here. We actually have the Enchi gene in here, keeping the uh, the white down in this, and uh, this is going to be a great breeder for me in the future. And this is our male, Enchi Clown Pie. He's a little on the small side. I'd like to, I got to get Papa to start feeding him a little bit more because I'd like to get him into the breeding program, but I, I think we're going to miss this year. We'll probably have to wait till the end of the season and start him fresh in the fall. Um, I just think he needs needs the time. Sometimes you can get him up in a year or even under. I know people that have bred males in six months uh, after they were born, but he's just not going to do it. And I'm not in any rush. I don't really have anything pressing to put him to right now, so we could wait till the fall. He's looking really good. Love his head. Look at that head. It's a real clown head right there. Enchi clown head, I should say. And once again, Enchi clown pie. And if we're going to show our Enchi clown pies, we might as well show uh, this little girl who's in shed. This is our banana clown pied. So once again, one of my uh, favorites from the 22 season. She's, she's not a year old yet. She's, she'll be a year in September, end of September. So she's got some decent size also for the fact that she's less than a year old. Beautiful. Banana uh, clowns are so great. Banana pieds are great. Banana clown pieds, can't beat it. And here's banana Enchi clown is 66% head pied. So we're not really sure if there's pied in here or head pied in here because we bred a um, head to head for the parents. 
but we have certainly hit on the beautiful combination here of Enchi Clown and um, Banana. So Banana Enchi Clown. I love that combination, Banana Enchi. I love Banana Clowns, but Banana Enchi Clowns are even better because they stay really clean looking. See how clean this is? See how clean this pattern is? Just beautiful. And if this proves out to be, this little girl proves out to be Head Pied, then we hit, we hit Pay Dirt with this girl then. I have two sisters. I have another sister right here. Let's see. She doesn't want to open up though. I'll probably sell one of these guys because I don't need both. The question is, which one do I sell? Which one do I keep? Are they both head pied or are they neither head pied or is one head pied and one not head pied? We don't know. We won't know. There's really no pied markers to tell on these, um, on these because their pattern is so disrupted because of the Enchi and the clown and the banana in there. So we won't be able to tell, but I think I will sell one of these little sisters. If they're almost, you know, they're coming up on a year. I think they're ready to go. And since we showed Enchi clown pieds, we showed Banana Enchi Clowns, a possible head pied. We showed banana clown pieds. Let's just show a regular clown pied, which are beautiful in their own right. This is great. It's 50 50. You got 50% white, 50% pattern. You got, I mean, the head is all clown. You got the pied separating the clown pattern. Absolutely stunning. This little female will probably be for sale at some point if anyone is interested getting into the clown pie project reach out to me all right look at this this is a, a fun site my double head snow to snow carpet python breeding is hatching and they're hatching early and the only thing i could think of that would cause them to hatch early would be the fact that I ran my incubator a little warmer this time around. Usually I run my incubators low, like 86, and I bumped them to 88, and things have been hatching quicker. I only did that because my friend over at Gavin, over in um, the UK, suggested with ball pythons, if you run them a little warmer, he's noticing he's getting more females and less males, and I, I am always a little male heavy, so I'm trying to do an experiment. This, this one right here actually looks, uh, Cliff, like an axanthic, which is um, removal of all yellows. And he's got the, the silver eyes to prove it. And then this one is looking like an albino right there. And then this one's looking like a snow. I think we got some visual snows here, which would be really cool if that's the case. Look at that. So that's albino, that one. And remember, they have, these uh, carpets have a go through an ontogenetic color change year old, so they're not gonna look like they do when they're fully grown and adults, so. But that's really white looking. So I think that's albino, I think that's snow, which would make sense, because we're gonna get some more snows than we normally do, because the father was a visual snow. And you can see all these eggs here, they're all pipped. So we haven't seen them all come out yet, but they're all, they all seem to have pipped properly. Look at them all the way around there. They pip, these carpets come out on their own. I never have to usually cut eggs, so. I think there's uh, this. They're all pipping. Yeah, every single one of them has been pipped. So, it usually takes about a week once they pip. You know, anywhere from five to seven days for them to come out and absorb their yolk sac. This one's already out. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, I have one more little container of eggs. We're gonna pull those out and see what we got on there too. This one's really nice. This one really came out nice. Yeah, it's like one of the. It's like a, It's like one of the bluest looking uh, exanthics I've ever produced. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Got a surprise. Who would have known? My incubator is uh, it's running a little warmer than normally. I usually run it around 86. I've been running at 88, back to the old uh, days of 88. I, I couldn't get the nerve up to raise it up to 90. My friend Gavin, I told you over at um, Ball CU in the UK, he runs his incubator at 90. He claims he gets more female um, ball pythons than males. I don't know. I, 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 I kind of went in between. I went 88 degrees and it seems like my carpet pythons hatched early because I was expecting them to, to hatch on May 4th. Uh, they're starting to hatch already. Not all of them came out, of course, but uh, we, I mean, we're at April 28th here. So, I mean, it's, it's about a week early and it looks like we have snows, which is great. Or well, one snow so far. We had an albino. We had an azanthic. So I, I'm pretty excited. You know, uh, that's it's, I'm not excited to have to feed all these things because 
I think we have over 25 um, carpet pythons, but that was really only my carpet pipe, the only carpet python clutch that was successful this year. We had one other one. I only got one egg that hatched. Um, it was a little bit of a disappointment, and um, I lost one carpet python. My um, jungle jag zebra that was head for granite. I've been trying to breed her for a couple of years. I don't know. She Every year she gets a respiratory, and this year she just didn't recover from it. So she's out of the lineup now. She's unfortunately passed, and... Uh, We'll have to figure out who we want to breed our zebra, granite, possible caramel, male too. Um, he's one of my favorites in my collection. I don't even care if I breed him, but I'd like to breed him. Maybe we'll breed him to our uh, possible zebra albino we have. Uh, so that's a possibility moving forward. But anyway, I do digress. We did have a, a fun day today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's videos. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back. Monday morning.